in circles for so long I never really understood what I did wrong I was trying hard to find a place where I belong I lived an empty life but I had to carry on I guess I really was giving up on love And I tried to block those feelings off in a mill of sex Then it all came back When I thought that every um. <laughs> Hello my darling from <laughs> Sorry. How are you? <laughs> How are we? My name is Fumi de Salufold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, I really do love you and I'm very, very happy that you dropped by on your way to wherever you were going. I'm in a good mood today, but let me start with what I'm wearing. Do you remember when I did an episode with Cam Newton? and the wonderful and the beautiful Dr. Cheyenne Bryant. Well, I skipped over to her Instagram and homegirl was wearing this particular dress. Come to find out, it's fashion over. I said, say what now? <laughs> I jumped right over to fashion over and it was 40 something dollars. And then it said 50% off. It came now to 20 something pounds and that it will be shipped to me in a matter of days. I jumped up. <laughs> oh, God. So this is it, my darling. Isn't it lovely? We live and we love. And that's the bag. I just love it. I really, really love it. And that's it. I live and love. And then this is the bag. I just live for it. All right. So why are we here? Why are we here? We are here because of our fabulous, beautiful, gorgeous Tamar Braxton. <laughs> Tema and her soon-to-be ex-husband. Many of us, we did not know that she was married because she went on live on her YouTube channel here in these YouTube streets and she had to air a couple of things. So I said to myself, you know what? Let us, because I love to kiki with you guys, I really do. Let us hear her go on and then we'll be conversing back and forth. Yeah? Alrighty. So let me start and we'll go. I just want to be very clear on if nobody stopped the relationship with me, I stopped the relationship with them. I blocked that person. I blocked that person on social media. Um, and I only called that person to find out about my credit card being used. Now, everybody knows that let's not play stupid, okay? I don't go to bookings.com. I don't even really kind of know, you know, what that is or what's, what's that about, right? I use my physical card. If I do um, reservations, it's through, I have a touring company, so we have our own travel agency. And so I, I'll go through that or I'll go through um, my American Express, right, where I physically use my card. So we're not going to pretend that, oh, yeah, yeah, so I'm not going to pretend like, oh, yeah, um, they got our credit cards mixed up because I thought you were single six months ago. We went, so which one, which one we doing? You know what I'm saying? I mean, just here's the thing for me about guys. When, when, when things come out about men, they always say, oh, the woman is delusional. Oh, we wasn't together. Oh, I wasn't leading nobody on. And, oh, they did the things on their own. Oh, come on. How many times have we heard that story? And so I don't even know why we're trying to perpetuate that storyline today. Listen, I'm, for, I'm in my 40s. And I, come on, I've had my fair share of relationships and, you know, my dealings with men and you know, with me having like male friends, I hear a lot of stuff. I've been around the world and I, 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 okay? So I've heard it all. So we're not going to sit here and pretend that anybody is not going to drop a bag on a man or go to a, a city like Turks and Caicos if there was not, if you didn't feel that there was a chance of reconciliation. And let's just be clear. I didn't ask myself. I didn't ask myself to no birthday parties. This person told me right over here at the St. Regis, I want you to be a part of my birthday. Now, if you're seeing this, this, that, and the other, why you want me to come? Now, y'all got to realize, now, the man didn't say the status of our relationship. 
at that time, we were very much married. Very much married. So I am thinking that, you know, I am pouring into my marriage that is troubled, that, you know, I want because I love my kids, family, I love you, you know that. You, you just said you love me, so now all of a sudden, now we not, okay. So I'm pretending, and I'm delusional, and I made all of this stuff up, okay? Now, I don't have to buy no man. I know who I am. I know the kind of money I make. I know the status of my life. I don't have to buy no man. But if I'm pouring into my relationship, pouring into someone that I want to rekindle something with because... This is not my boyfriend. I'm wrong for that. Oh, and I'm on my own for that. And not you saying, oh, when your birthday come around, I'm a wop, 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 woom, woom. Like, I had absolutely no idea to feel like I was in this by myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, people have seen us out. People seen us at your favorite restaurant. Yes, you have been. We have been, quote, unquote, living apart. And, and I guess you want to say single where we can you know date other people and see what's out there but you clearly told me you wasn't with nobody you clearly told me that you you are emotionally unavailable and you just wah, wah, boom, boom, boom. and my whole thing and let's not make it like oh i got men i'm sorry we keep being cut up but this is important and we're not gonna make it like oh now tamar got mental health issues now, y'all have seen this man. We're not going to pretend that this man ain't been, has not been airing me out and embarrassing me for the past six months. Y'all see me sit up here and take a bunch of L's and apologize and really try to work toward my marriage and try to, you know, fix shit. And, you know, because the truth is, y'all so much, I don't even really know. <laughs> you know? But just like he said, I'm not going to divulge everything, but I'm not going to let nobody sit up here and make it seem like I am delusional and deranged. And you clearly said you don't want me. Y'all know when I found out I was getting a divorce and my divorce is going to be final on our trip to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> Did <Didn't> say that. <laughs> That's when I found out at the bar, I got an email. So let's not do that. Friend, don't do that. Friend, don't do that, you know? And here is the thing. I didn't, like I said before, I did not mean to post that lady. It could have been, it, like, it, it was a casualty of war. It could have been anybody. Because like he told me, he was busting down, wop, wop, wop. He ain't even in nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't say he cheated on me. I said you played in my face. Because the truth of the matter is that you were supposed to be here for me, to show up for me on Sunday. And you didn't do that. And just like I told him, like, well, this got to be a two-way street, boo. Like, we, we can't, I can't show up for you and you don't show up for me. That can't happen. And so you decided to extend your trip and didn't say anything to me. In, in New Orleans. And then I find out you, you, I didn't even say nothing to you. You know, I didn't even make it a big deal. I didn't even, you know, like this person is making it seem like I got with D and we were getting married and I got with you and we got married and, 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 and I'm I, you know what I'm saying? It's just not like, oh, I'm addicted to the white meat. Like it was, but now it's different because you're using my car. For, I'm not trying to make this a big deal. A, th a thousand dollars. It's not, it's not, you know, Make a break. It's the point. The point is, is that you wanted me to sit back and let you not only use my car. Let's just say it's a mix up. Okay, fine. But now it's different because you're using my car for your extracurricular activities. And let me just keep it gangsta. I wouldn't even trip on that. You know what I'm saying? Wah, wah. It's not that serious. Me and your relationship status has changed the way I see you have changed. You know what I'm saying? Just like you outside, baby, I'm outside too. Uh -huh. Let's stop pretending like you is the last of the Mohicans. You are not. You know what I'm saying? This is not like, oh, I am addicted to the white meat. Like, it was fine for what I had, but okay. It ain't giving that. And, I, uh, and the truth is, I, I put too much on it because we are, we were married and I take my vows serious and I thought that you did too. 
And so the truth is I was waiting for you to come around like a wife. Because all I know how to be is a wife. I was married to Vince and that didn't work out. And I, I got with D and we were getting married and I got with you and we got married. And I, and, and I married you after you ate somebody, you know, whole booty, boo, whole booty sandwich. <laughs> so let's not talk about wow and what happened before then, okay? Don't make it seem like I'm you a bad person. Don't make it seem like I didn't put up with a lot. Don't make it seem like, oh, I've been so gracious to her. And, you know, I have been giving grace. And she's a da 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 wah, wah. No, baby. Don't do that. We have given grace to each other. And I hate that I posted that last night for that 10 seconds that I posted and now that it's a frenzy today. But the simple fact of the matter is that I tried to call you and I tried to talk to you and you were so nasty to me. And at the end of the conversation, you're going to tell me to go take my meds. Something that nobody else in the world knew and something that you tried to weaponize against me. Are you saying that people who take mental medication or anxiety medication, they are not stable? I would hate for you to say that as a lawyer. Don't do that. The fact of the matter is, I only came back to say this. Um, I'm not delusional. I am not crazy. I don't have to throw myself on a man. And yes, we have been estranged for six months. And we everything was just final on Friday. And I'm going to say this in closing because I don't want to say too much. I've, I've probably already said too much, but my feelings are, are hurt because everybody is making it seem like I am crashing out over this person and I'm not. Um, Mommy Kims. Hello, my darling. I will I'm, hang. I'm fine. I'm filming. I'll call you right back. Simply. Okay, darling. Love you. Disrespect. And the truth is I should have gone Mama. a long time ago. Okay, and I did it because, um, and I'm sure that people that have been here before when you're in love with a person who aren't in love with you back and that was my case but I didn't realize it until Turks and Caicos I had no idea until Turks and Caicos I knew that we had problems I knew that you know things wasn't working but I always thought that we loved each other because we always said that we did and um, I always felt like you know with love you can that is a ground zero for you to rebuild and so now that you feel like I have aired you out. <laughs> like you have aired me out for months and embarrassed me for months. You know, oh, now we ain't going to be friends. Well, that option is not even open to you because I'm the one who blocked you a few days ago. I'm the one who cut off social media and social media and all communication with you. So let's stop perpetuating that. Yes, you are the one who filed for divorce because you were the lawyer. We, you and I as a couple decided that. We Don't make it seem like, oh, I got to leave, da, 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 because we're not even going to go there. So stop doing that. And I told, my, I told my daughter that I would not talk about her dad, but in the same interim, I hope she had the same conversation with you that you cannot talk about me. And make it look like I'm deranged and crazy. Now, I know you love Logan. I know you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what your children means to me. And most of the reason why I was trying to hold together our union. But what I'm not going to do, Jay, is feel like I got used. Because I did. Of course, I do a lot for a lot of people. You know, and you know I do a lot for a lot of people, financially, gift-wise, whatever. I, that's just my nature. I didn't think that I was, oh, dropping a whole bag on you and now we're going to get back together. No. I didn't think that. But did I feel a certain kind of way when you was nasty with me and you used my car for, for entertaining some... And I said, Tramp, because you're the one who said that's not your woman. You're the one who said that you, you can't... You hitting them off, you, you hit the jump offs, and they, ain't, they don't mean nothing to you, and you know, it's, it's just sex. You told me that. So if the defamation, that is you giving me the information. Hello? <laughs> and and y'all was following it and talking to each other way more than three days ago, JR. Don't do that. Let's stop making it like I'm trying to be crazy because I don't want this for us. Now, at a certain amount of time, maybe a year, 19 years, 30 years, we could talk, but you know. Yeah, it's a no for me, dog. And it has to be a no for me because I have to start loving me. And clearly, you know, all the work that I'm doing, you know, I'm definitely skipping over loving me because I felt like I loved you and I, I loved what we could have been and what we were more than myself. And I am so sorry, you know, to everybody out there that I, you know, put out this 
post last night. I was praying to God that it didn't go viral. I was praying to God that it didn't, you know, that nobody caught it. I was, you know, praying to God because I knew that, you know, it wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. It was an emotional thing. But I mean, sometimes when you have been disrespected to the level that I have been disrespected from the situation publicly, it'd be too much, you know, and, um, I, I apologize to everybody that was hurt behind it, especially to my kids that I love so much. Um, and um, I'm never going to keep you away from your son. I'm never going to. And I hope that you don't keep me away from my kids. But, you know, I just feel like the way that you try to twist this story is unforgivable and sad. Because, you know, I came to you calmly and nice after not speaking to you and asked you what happened with the card. And this could have been all avoided. But you're nasty. And uh, every woman that's gotten online has said the same thing. Like, you're, you're nasty and you're not nice. And I didn't do anything to you. And I wasn't trying to be in your business. And you know me, you don't even have that relationship. Um, but I said you played in my face and I meant that. And you have been playing in my face for a while now. And I'm sorry that I snapped online. Um, and I'm sorry this is where we are. But we can wrap this up. Because I have nothing else to say. Um, and I'm going actually about to go and film something, you know, for a while. And so I won't even be here. So everybody go and enjoy what y'all enjoy. And I'm taking everybody out the chat. And once again, I apologize, you know, to everybody. It was an emotional 10, 15, 30 second post. And, um, this is what happens, you know, when families fall apart. And this is what happens when people are hurt. And this is what happens when, you know, um, people are, you know, fall out of love. And, um, I, but I'm in the same talking, I'm not going to let anybody weaponize me about my mental health journey. Something that I'm really proud of and that I worked really, really, really hard on. Like we have to really normalize not doing that to people and taking a jab at them when that's all you have left. Because, you know, this could have all been avoided. Um. I snap when you said take your meds. Like, oh. Okay. Let me get that out of the way. Oh, baby. Well, guys. <laughs> Tima and Jeremy Robinson were married. I don't know why she would have married him. After what came out last year, when Tommy gave us a very, very live visual of what he did to her between the upper part of her thighs. That's all I'm going to say. <sighs> Tema, listen. I'm sorry for the way that you feel. Because I know that you love him still. And um, we don't know why we love certain people. We don't even know how we get to that stage of when we are completely and absolutely in love with them. We don't know exactly what it was. We just find ourselves there. And I think for everybody it's heartbreak. People handle heartbreak very differently. And the thing is, if somebody gets knocked down by a car, everybody rushes, oh my God, oh my God, are you okay? Ambulance, ambulance, call the ambulance. We're going to A&E, &E. he's bleeding, he's bleeding, he's dying. Heartbreak is the same way. It's love, true love, that has nowhere to go. It has nowhere to go and it's been blocked from the avenue of which it has been traveling all this time. Your heart is broken. It's smashed into pieces and you really cannot function. And yet you're expected to in a world that seems very cold, that seems very unsympathetic, that tells you, come on, come on, get up, get over it, get over it. 
But we don't say that to the person who has suffered or been a victim of a car crash. We don't say, come on, get up, get up. His legs and heart and everything is broken too. And so is yours. And in so doing, we do very foolish and very stupid things. Because what has happened is that nobody called us. Nobody gave us a memo. We didn't get a WhatsApp chat to say that the guy that you're in love with no longer loves you. And this is fact. We didn't get that. We found out. So what do we do? We excuse it away. We excuse it because it's too hurtful on our heart to take. Because it's a shock to the system. That's just too much. We need a little bit of time to absorb all of this. Because that's what we do with shocking news. Jeremy has been a fraud from day one. He had an agenda. He also had many children from various women. You are from a celebrity family. You, my darling, are a celebrity. Not him. But you have made him very popular because of the way you have behaved. And he was very smart. And I say this with full-on confidence. If I did not do the tour in New York, I would not understand what celebrities do on a grand scheme when they're performing every night. I lost 12 pounds in 13 days. It's a beast. I also see how lonely it is. I also see how you can be in a room full of people and still feel terribly alone or miss other people from home. You're a celebrity. Who are you supposed to date? People really think that you go around dating other celebrities, that you are around other celebrities. And maybe you don't want to be around other celebrities because the celebrities are into themselves all the time. Or maybe it's a situation where you just really want to be normal. And you know what happened? The vulnerability was evident. It has nothing to do with your mental health. Let's push that aside. You are not exposed to the concrete jungle. You're a performer from a performer's family. And so Jeremy Robertson folded his legs like the lawyer he is and said, I know how to get this girl. And he got you good. All this Bible study that you gave us was not important. It was not important to us. It's not important to him. Eventually, you will see that it wasn't even important to you. You were just ranting because you're still emotional. And that's what we do when we care. You see, if we don't care, just look at the person. And you move on. You cut the person off. This could have been a WhatsApp family chat where you could have gone off so that the children that you say that you love and he loves Logan, so on and so forth would know. I think it was for you to say, what is this life? I've been married once. I, I, I did this again. I, be, I, I, you know, the best thing I can do is a wife. No, the worst thing that you're doing is a wife. You're, you're not able to be a wife. That's a mother. Yes. Wife, no. Because you have to love yourself. You're coming in like a machine. You're doing the laundry. You're doing the cooking. You're getting people up in the morning and getting them to bed at night. You are a peacemaker. You are taking care of your business. You are taking care of your love. You have to have your coffee, your tea, your milkshake in the morning before you run this machine. <laughs> and they call you wife. It is very underrated. Believe you me. You can't do wife because you can't do yourself first. To be a wife, you have to take care of yourself first. You have to take care of yourself first. To be a wife, to be a mother, to be this, to be that. You have to take care of yourself first. And you're not taking care of yourself. Why? Because you're exposing yourself to constant unnecessary danger. First in line, Jeremy Robinson. He never cared about you. And I know that is a very bitter pill to swallow. Very bitter. It's a tablet that you really just want to wrap around. It's soft, sweet. Throw it in there, then swallow. Because it's that bitter. But it's the truth. And unfortunately for you, as far as I can see, you still love him. And he will continue 
to do what he does. Let me tell you from a woman that has been married for 16 years, a man that loves you could not sleep with another woman. He just wouldn't do it. It takes time for you to do that. It's running through your mind. And if it's running through your mind, it means that two of you are not engaged. Physically, mentally, spiritually. He's already disengaged from you. And that void is there for him to start wondering. It's not even the woman in particular. It's that he's no longer engaged with you. It always and will always start with you. All you. Always you. Once you are no longer there, in his mind, in his spirit, in his person, even as a dignitary to say, I am Tamar's husband, with a ring in tow, it is a title on him of which he holds dear and high, and it is a standard, and he says it with pride, to everybody and anybody in the room, in the office, on the plane, in the cafe, at the bar. I'm Tamer's husband. Just a drink, please. One drink. I gotta go home. He has pride in who he is and who he's with. That he went down and out with Tommy. There's no other conversation that you should have had with that man. And he should be nowhere near your son if he can disrespect the mother that way. If you know who you are, then you would know not to stand for this. And you would not even announce it on a public platform. You wouldn't do it because of who you are. Tema. I adore you. I adore you. I think that you are very attractive and you are talented. You come from a wonderful family and nobody's perfect, not even I. And we can stand here on judgmental city, sit down here on this swivel chair and be telling you this, that and the third. It's not easy for anybody. And the woman that you do see here is not the woman that used to be back in the day. Please, I've been down here and that's why I understand how this ends. And I've learned how to put myself in check. And that was why I said, oh, for me, you know what? You need therapy, mama. So I said, you know what, for me, come, 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 come. Because you cannot continue to do this to yourself. And as time got by, and I understood what was and what was not. And what worked for me, really, for my mental health, for my heart, for my emotions, everything. And it was then that I began to soar. It was then I began to grow. Jeremy doesn't even respect himself, let alone his children, let alone you. Because if he did, he couldn't ever, ever do what he did with you. Do what he did to you. Did what he did when he wasn't with you. But you are here with a broken voice, trying to explain, trying to be spiteful, putting this girl's picture on blast. Why? You want her to hurt and bleed the way that you have been bleeding for months. It's not healthy for you. My focus is you. Cut everybody, everything off. Cut it off. Go into therapy. If that need be. Cry every day if you have to. But stop this. It's not healthy. It's not what? It's not healthy. Jeremy is living for this. Every time you call out his name, he gets more followers. Of which he wants. Now his rates have gone up. The reality shows, they're going to be coming back for the season. Trust me when I tell you, he's getting offers. Don't do it to yourself, mama. Don't do it. You are so much more. 
it's harder for celebrities. I get it. But Cotill, this grant was unnecessary. It was unnecessary about the money, about this, all of it. I let you say everything you had to say and all of it was unnecessary for anybody to have heard it. You don't even have to tell Jerry, Jeremy. He knows. He knows what he did. You don't have to tell him. He's not a fool. He knows what he did. You keep on going. Better yourself, better your life. Because you see what happens in the grand scheme of things. Do you know that the other men that look at you and say, Tima could be a possibility. I don't mind, girlfriend. She kind of cute still. Then they see this mess. And they're like, hmm. It's like something that they see on a shelf. You know, they want to buy. AK me. I look at it and I'm like, ah, yes. Let me throw it into my basket. And then upon reflection, when I take a closer look, I'm like, ah, it's frayed at the edges. Mm. Maybe if it goes on sale. <laughs> Maybe. That's how it is. You even spoil your outside market. <laughs> Not funny. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Tima. Grieve this relationship of which you loved. And I don't know why, but you did. Mourn it and move on. Because it's doing more damage to you than anything else. Don't play victim. We gave you the advice. You refuse to take it. And then you come back out here for empathy and sympathy. You want to weaponize you, the situation, and try to sway people to your side and say, Oh my God, you know, he's so bad, he's so this. But this, my darling, the last thing that I'll say before I come up out of here is self-inflicted. You took the injection and you just jabbed yourself. Boom, bye, yeah. That was it. Ladies, gentlemen, do not forget to like, to subscribe, hit the notification button, and I will see you sooner than later. All of my love. Da, 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 da.